fellow peoples, today I'm going to be ranking all the best picture nominees for the Oscars of 2020, but for movies for 2019, if you're watching in the future. So, so I apologize on my voice. Well, not my voice, just as I've had a really bad sore throat for the past like week. And so I might not sound or look the best. It's the coronavirus. Just kidding. Okay. Number coming in. Well, let me just say the nominees for the um movie. The nominees are 1917, Jojo Rabbit, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, The Irishman, Joker, Marriage Story, Parasite, Little Women, and Ford vs. Ferrari. And we're going to be going from... Um, well, all of these are pretty good movies. My, my bottom one is the one I'm just kind of iffy on. But but I'm telling you, from number eight, well, number eight I really like, but from seven on up, I love. So there's not one this year I'm like, eh, I didn't really, except for maybe number nine, but I still really like number nine. But anyways, all this talk about number nine, let's get to number nine. And number nine is Ford versus Ferrari. The first time I watched this, I gave it a nine out of ten. Well, I've only seen it once, but because those racing scenes were just so fantastic. Then I, now I'm looking back, I'm like, those business scenes were really boring, and I know I'm I'm usually not I'm down for business. I I heck I love the morning show, and that's like all screaming at each other from it's a business movie. So I thought Ford v Ferrari, all its business stuff just really fell flat. All the behind the scenes like drama, it was, I just thought it was kind of stupid. But once we got to the racing part where they're actually building building the engine where on Matt Damon or Christian Bale's character, it's really great. And you know, this movie's probably like I gave it a nine out of ten when I first or yeah, a nine out of ten when I first saw it. And it's probably lowered to like an eight point five, but it's just those business scenes really felt flat. And those are like a solid thirty minutes of the movie, and it's like a two hour movie. So yeah, it's a good chunk where I think it eight point five is solid for it. And that's why Ford vs. Ferrari is at number nine. Number eight, m the movie I had to see the to um do this video is Little Women. And like I said, Little Women was fantastic. And it, it's just not my type of genre with the old timey oh, got a buzz for my watch. On go surveys it says you could earn two dollars. Uh no. Um <clears throat> I those these old movies about like like that happen after war and they're talking about like well, I didn't know anything about Little Women walking into it. I had no idea what the story was. But the thing is, movies should be able to introduce something to you and we shouldn't have to know anything about it. Unless if it's a sequel, of course. But but you have to know about this story to watch this movie. Because I had no idea it took after took place after the Civil War until it like happened like 40 minutes in. And they're like, yeah, because Abe Lincoln. I was like, what? <laughs> um, But yeah, I'd be fine to see this movie win. It, it's just... It's really great, and it's really well made, and the acting is just phenomenal, and it's really hard hitting at the end, but it's just it's not my type of movie. But I'd like to see it win, and honestly, the I want everything, every single best picture. I would like to see win. Of course, not all of them is going to get it, but you know what I mean. Except for Ford versus Ferrari. Ford versus Ferrari. I I just I don't want to see it win, and if it does, I'll be mad. But I still think it's good. Uh, it's so hard to talk about these Oscar movies because it, because you're talking about all fantastic movies and you just you have to decide which one's better than the other but it but yet to justify yourself you kind of have to act not act but like say the flaws in one of them to say why it's below but at the end of the day you still think they're all great yeah coming in at number seven is Jojo Rabbit um uh, sorry my throat um, wow, um, Taika really went all in on this movie. It's heartfelt, and it, it's, it's almost perfect. Um, like I said, all these movies, seven on up, are just great. I thought, um, my only problem that's a little bit lower on the list is that it, for ten minutes, maybe it dragged a little bit. Ten, ten minutes. That's how much of a difference ten minutes could make, and where it's, place on this list because all these movies are just that good and Roman Griffin, Griffin Davis I believe Roman Griffin Davis I believe had a fantastic performance as um Jojo Scarlett Johansson did had a really good performance um and whoever played the Jew in the closet 
um, did a good job. And it, it's just a really heartfelt movie that does take drastic turns in comedy and not horror, but like the realism of the Holocaust. And it's just so fantastic. And there's just a drag for 10 minutes for a little bit there in the second act. That's it. Coming in at number six, 1917. And I know we're getting towards the top now, but I'll, I'll justify each reason of why. Because you'll see why each problem gets smaller and smaller. Um, 1917, I think I really enjoyed it. My only problem was, is that, it, and it's something you really can control. I just thought the pacing was new and different because it's my first whole entire one-shot movie I've ever seen. So it was just getting used to that factor that kind of threw me off guard. Plus, um, I started, I was able to tell whenever they would cut it because, um, I noticed whenever they would pass a tree or next time it, it's really distracting because I had a theory and, and I'm just saying they pass through way. I know exactly when they cut just because whenever they're walking, they pass by something, especially in the opening scene where they're walking through all the, um, dug up ground pits or whatever it's called oh, crap i took that class two years ago um but it whenever they would pass like a piece of wood and we would only see that piece of wood i'm like you stopped it there and then resumed it and they do it through the whole entire movie especially like whenever they're like walking through um like a wooded area whenever they would pass by a tree i'm like okay i'm sorry but it just but i got used to it after like I don't know, 15 minutes, and it really wasn't a, a problem, it, and it was just honestly me, me getting used to the one-shot, um, way of a movie, and I was just getting used to it, but it was something new, and it kind of threw me off guard, but the rest of the movie is just amazing, the performances are great, the special effects for a small movie like this, not, I, I don't want to call it small, but, you know, it's one of those limited release movies for a minute, and then they released it wide, and it made a lot of money, and I guarantee you, if it didn't win that Golden Globe, it would not. It would have probably made like twenty million opening weekend. Um, but yeah, nineteen seventeen is really solid, and I'd like to see that win as well. And number five is The Irishman. I think this is technically the best movie. Like everything, because this movie has the most consistency out of all of them. There might be stuff on this list above this that I think. Um, did some stuff better, but the I think the Irishman really had that consistent line to the point where it's not the best. It didn't it didn't do the best out of all of these, but I thought this had like the most consistent great. If you know what I'm trying to say, like the movies about this, like were kind of like. Well, I'll, let me just explain. Um, Irishman. Irishman's like this as a movie. Um. The other movies above this could go like, I, I hope you know what I'm trying to say with my hands, if with my language, but this one was just the most consistently good where I really don't have any problems with it, but there's the movies above this did some stuff better than this, but still this movie did some other stuff better than the other ones. It was just more of the balance in how I balance these out above this. And I, I'd like to see this one and I I don't think, I'll get to who I think will win at the end, even though I did kind of go over this, like, every everything changes, so yeah. Coming in at number four is Joker. I, I really love Joker, it's my favorite, most, it's, it's my favorite movie of last year. Um, it's not the, when I say favorite and best, I think best is Irishman, and favorite is Joker, the one I enjoyed myself the most, the one not, where I saw a smile on my face the whole time, and... Well, not the whole time. You know what I mean. The one where I was like, this is exactly what I wanted this movie to be. Joker was exactly what I wanted to be, wanted a Joker movie to be. And that's why it is my favorite. Because I, it just gave me everything I wanted out of a Joker movie. Of course, some lines here and there were like, eh, that's not the best line. But Joaquin Phoenix made it work. And, and Joker is just amazing. Coming in at number three is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, I've only seen, including this, I've only seen three Tarantino movies, which is Pulp Fiction and Glorious Bastards and this. I haven't seen anything else. I need to see Kill Bill, Volume 1 and 2. I need to see, um, 
Hateful Eight. Haven't seen them, but sorry, I I'll get to it. But I will say, out of the th other two I've seen, this is my favorite. And I'm, I wasn't the biggest fault, um, fan of Pulp Fiction. Like, I liked it a lot, but it, I just still think this one was better. Um, and a Glorious Bastards. This is probably a little bit above it for me. I just love the performances in this movie. I thought the writing and dialogue was just so amazing. I know people have problems with, like, Sharon Tate as Margot Robbie. But I think she had a lot of screen time, but people are getting more detailed. Like, her lines, though... This is still Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio's movie. And I know that she could probably been fleshed out a little bit more, but it did not bother me at the end. And I don't think it's, it was really that essential for the movie, even though I don't want to say she's the driving force. It's just she's what got us to the end. But I still think she had a good amount of screen time. And I don't know what people are talking about. Okay, coming in at number two is Marriage Story. Whoa. <laughs> At first, I, I've seen this movie twice now, and at first I said, I think that script is just okay. And I'm looking back at myself and I'm slapping myself in the face. Because, um, at first, because I was so mesmerized by um, Scarlett Johansson and Ad Adam Driver's performances, I was like, this is just okay dialogue, but they make it work. But now I look back and I'm like, there's so much stuff I missed. I'll tell you, Marriage Story is better the second time, and... It's just fantastic with two fantastic performances, but three from Scarlett Johansson, Adam Driver, and Laura Dern. Um, two of them, which are um Kid Critic Award um winners. If you want to go watch that video, go go do that. <laughs> so yeah, Marriage Story though I don't think it is going to win, and but it, it's still a fantastic movie. And coming in at number one is everyone's number one, and that's Parasite. I've watched this movie for the second time now since I've done the Kid Critic Awards, and since I've done the, um, and since I've done the, what's it called? Um, since my, um, top ten list, and it has risen on my list from four to three since I saw it for 2019. And this movie is just bonkers, um bonkers like as in bong joon bong joon ho bonkers like i tried to make a pun there but it didn't work um but parasite um all but fantastic performances and and of course i i don't speak korean and so sometimes it's quite i find it quite impressive if i'm able to feel the emotion when they're speaking a different language because most of the time if you hear someone speaking a different language on the street you can't tell what emotion they're doing they're like uh, I'm like what? But this cast, probably because I knew what they were saying. I'm an idiot. <laughs> but cast, fantastic. I'm glad it won the big award at SAG. Um, and the <sighs> it's one of those movies. It's just so hard to spoil. I mean, it's so hard not to spoil. And. The twist halfway through was just fantastic, and I don't want to repeat myself, but it's such an amazing movie. And if you haven't seen it because you don't want to read subtitles, just get over it and go see Parasite because it's just amazing. But yeah, now let me get into what I, on this list, I think, honestly, who I want to win. Like I said, I want anything to win but Ford versus Ferrari, which I still like. <laughs> But I'm glad with, like I said, Little Women, Jojo Rabbit, 1917, Irishman, Joker, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, A Marriage Story, and Parasite. <laughs> it's the fastest I've ever said those. But I'm fine with any of those winning. Just anything but Ford versus Ferrari, honestly. But who who do I think will win? I think it's been down to 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Parasite. And I don't know why, it's just a gut feeling. Jojo Rabbit could possibly get it just because... It just kind of, it's just a feeling. I feel like JoJo might possibly get it. And and, it, and if it did get it, I could look back in this video and be like, yeah, I knew it. But do I really think it? Think it? I, I don't know. I, it's just something inside of me telling me. It, JoJo might get it. But who I really think will get it is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Just because it... 
I don't know how to explain it. It just feels like not Oscar bait, but it felt like it was made for people in the Academy to go best picture stamp. <laughs> and but like I said, I could easily see 1917 win as well. And yeah, but I, of course, who I want to win Parasite, the, it's my number one on this list. I obviously want Parasite to win the most. And it has a, a tiny little chance. It could, it really could impress. And I'm not gonna, but I just, will I say, am I going to say, will it? I, I won't say it will, I, I'll say it might. <laughs> so that's why I don't have it start on my list. That's right below the camera. So below you guys. So yeah. And before I get to the, my outro, I will once again shout out myself. <laughs> um, My Instagram for this channel is Kid Critic movie reviews with an underscore in there somewhere crap you'll probably find it um and i will actually correct myself i'll be right back kid underscore critic movie reviews okay there you go we got it <laughs> so go follow that because you guys really can't comment anymore so kappa <laughs> so yeah anyways um, comment down your list. Well, you can't. Never mind. <laughs> or comment down on my, um, on one of my posts. I'll, I'll see it. Um, so, on my Instagram, so. This bums me out. Let me get my list out of the way. Yep. Like I said, right below you. you why doesn't my list want to move? Like, share, subscribe, and stuff like that, and adios.